powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Russ Reesinger. New airline service sees major growth potential in Billings. It announces today a deal it believes Montanans will take up. It all happened today at the Billings Logan International Airport, where the airline and community unveiled a new low-cost service many are calling a mile-high win-win. You may remember Frontier Airlines service buildings in the past. However, this time around, Frontier says it's here to stay. Now the airline is touting its ultra-low-cost non-stop service to Denver to serve Montanans for leisure and business. Frontier says fares will start as low as $39 each way and flights begin May 30th. The airline will offer three non-stop flights a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. Frontier says it's seeing a new kind of growth out of the Billings market not to mention the company is now operated differently and under new ownership. So I think it's going to be mutually beneficial. Um, you know, typically we are more of a uh, what's called a VFR, visiting friends and relatives airline, as well as leisure airline. But that is still a huge business benefit when it enhances and grows tourism to the area and the region, helps hotels, helps restaurants, uh, and that overall helps the economy as a whole. You can log on and start booking now, but again, the new service will not actually take flight until the end of May. Now, currently, United operates four nonstop flights daily between Denver and Billings. Frontier also offers service in and out of Bozeman and Missoula. Does First Interstate Arena have a nice ring to it? Well, that name, one step closer to a permanent place on the side of Metro Park's largest venue. This morning, Yellowstone County Commissioners tentatively accepted the recommendation to rename Metro Park Arena. The commissioners now have 30 days while negotiations between a Metro Park committee and First Interstate take place. Then a final agreement, including final price and terms, will be presented back to the county commissioners. Rimrock Auto decided not to renew its contract with Metro Park this coming May of 2019, along with First Interstate's initial bid of $875,000 for five years. Ultra Graphics lost out with a 10-year, more than $1 million proposal to claim the name. Prominent Fox News anchor Brett Baer was back on the anchor desk this afternoon after being involved in a rollover crash in Bozeman yesterday. It happened after he and his family spent the weekend skiing at the Yellowstone Club. It's a good reminder of just how slick things can get out on Montana roads. Bear, along with his wife and two sons, were on their way to the airport when they slid through an intersection and were hit by a pickup truck, forcing them into a ditch. The car ended up landing on its driver's side. Bear and his family were transported to the hospital with minor injuries. Bear getting emotional as he addressed the incident on his show tonight. As we were released from the hospital, I tweeted this. Don't take anything for granted. Every day is a blessing. Family is everything. It's always good to remind yourself of that before something does it for you. Count your blessings. And I meant it. Bear also thanking Montana law enforcement, first responders, and a couple of helpful passerbys who helped his family following that accident. We'll turn into weather. We are all gearing up for another round of snow. Bob McGuire here to tell us all about it. And you know, just like Brer, uh, Brett uh, Brer was saying, it's going to be icy roads again for m most of Montana. Let me show you what's happening out there tonight. We're looking at mostly cloudy skies starting to roll into the state on the Doppler radar and satellite imagery. We have kind of a northwesterly flow of air moving out of Kalispell in towards Billings. So even though we had a few holes in the clouds, more clouds are starting to roll in tonight. So here's what's going to happen. You'll notice here comes your next batch of moisture moving into western Montana. It'll start producing some snow showers in the Billings area, probably sometime around 6.30 tomorrow morning. Then after that, it looks for more snow throughout the afternoon. By 7 o'clock, this stuff finally starts to fade away. And so because of that, we have a number of watches and warnings to talk about. Winter weather advisory in the purple for snowfall amounts ranging anywhere from 3 to 6 inches up by Kalispell to 10 to 16 inches in the mountains. And also uh, we have a winter weather advisory as well. Uh, 10 to 15 inches of snow in the Beartooths. Here in the Billings area, it's more like 2 to 4 inches of snow with slick roads all over the place. We'll have more on this coming your way in a few more minutes. All right, thanks so much, Bob. Well, with a half a foot of snow on the ground and the incoming storm, clearing our driveways and mailboxes is a necessary task. But for some in our community, doing those things can be difficult, if not impossible. So Rob Griggs ventured out today to bring us more information on how you can help. 
Well, we're standing out by the remnants of yesterday's snowstorm with Nicole Cromwell with Code Enforcement here in Billings. Snow Buddies is a program that allows people to volunteer to do some snow removal for people who need the help within their neighborhood. Is that right? That's right. We started this about seven years ago in 2011 when we had an enormous amount of snow. And we just had lots and lots of people who were not able to get rid of the snow on their public sidewalk the way they should be able right. to. Yeah. So we, we had people who said, I can help out. <laughs> so we said, hey, let's put these two people together. Let's make it happen. Well, that's a nice idea because everybody's looking for ways to pay it forward. And if there's somebody in their neighborhood where they can help out, probably the big question is, how can someone volunteer to be a snow buddy? What's the best way to do that? The best way to do that is to call our number 237-6146, Monday through Friday, or even at night if you're thinking about it. Leave us a message. We'll call you back, figure out where you're best deployed in our, in our great town and city of Billings to help someone who needs you. And my guess is that we have seniors, we have shut-ins, and people that just simply can't lift, especially this heavy, wet snow that we've been seeing. Oh, yes. Yeah. E even myself. I was <laughs> pushing my son-in-law out there yesterday. Come on, let's get it cleaned up, okay? Right. Give <laughs> us that phone number one more time, Nicole. 237-6146. All right. Let's round up some more snow buddies and make this a friendlier, neighborly place. <laughs> Back to you. All right. Thanks so much, Rob. In addition to helping out those in need with shoveling, be sure to check in on your neighbors during these cold spells to make sure they have heat and food. Votes aimed at ending the 32 day old partial government shutdown are now scheduled in the Senate, but tonight neither bill appears likely to succeed. Well, Lange reports from the White House. A pair of competing plans to end the partial government shutdown were introduced in the Senate on Tuesday. One is built around President Trump's offer of temporary protection for some migrants in exchange for border wall funding. To reject this proposal, Democrats would have to prioritize political combat with the president ahead of federal workers, ahead of DACA recipients, ahead of border security. Democrats describe the legislation as anything but a compromise. There were no serious negotiations with Democratic leaders or any Democrat to produce this proposal. The Senate will vote on the measure Thursday. It will also consider a stopgap spending bill that would fund the government through February 8th. But neither plan appears to have enough support to advance. Caught in the middle are the roughly 800,000 federal employees who have been furloughed or forced to work without pay. The White House hopes to pressure Democrats into making a deal before they miss another paycheck on Friday. The president's the only one in this process that's actually trying to help people that Democrats claim they care about. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi isn't budging. Before visiting a food bank for federal workers, she said there will be no negotiations until the government has been reopened. Mola Lenghi, CBS News, the White House. Federal workers affected by the shutdown will miss a paycheck on Friday. No matter how this week's votes turn out, the deadline for processing those checks is already passed. Some sad news tonight. The University of Montana football team is mourning the death of one of its teammates. MTN News has confirmed that police believe the death of defensive end Andrew Harris was a suicide. Harris was a senior academic student and a redshirt junior on the team. He was a 2015 graduate of Glacier High School in Kalispell, helping lead that team to the state championship. UM President Seth Bodner released a statement saying the entire UM family mourns his loss and our hearts go out to all who knew him. Well, suicide was a subject of a presentation here in Billings tonight. Frank King, known as the mental health comedian, spoke at MSU Billings for the annual Power of One Week. Yeah, this event is held every year to honor the spirit of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This year's theme focuses on bringing awareness to the suicide rates of college students. Q2 Zoe Zandora met with Frank King before he spoke this evening, and uh, she has more about what he had to say. Thanks, Russ and Janelle. Each year, 1,100 college students commit suicide. That's three a day, every day. MSUB invited Frank King to speak, as you mentioned, as part of the annual event in honor of Martin Luther King Jr., focusing on college student suicide. King has been a comedian for about 33 years and has battled depression and suicidal thoughts his whole life. Through his personal experience, his comedic background, and dealing with near suicide himself, King speaks to groups around the nation and around the world. Uh, depression and suicide run in my family. That's the reason I speak on it, I guess, at, at the heart of it. My grandmother died by suicide, my great aunt. I came close enough to dying by suicide, I could tell you what the barrel of my gun tastes like. And 
Uh, that's how I got into speaking on, I did a TED talk and came out to the world at age 58 as depressed and suicidal. Nobody knew, my wife didn't know, my friends, my family, nobody had any idea mm. that I was, you know, that I would have two mental illnesses. And once I did the TED talk, then I began the transition from funny speaker, comedian, to speaker who is funny. You know, people ask, how can a comedian talk about such a serious topic? And I asked Frank about that, and he said, talking 45 to 50 minutes about something so serious, it just gives people a little comic relief, if you will. They're, they are all organic stories that he tells, and it's just humorous moments, more or less, because it is hard to talk almost an hour about death and dying. Yeah. All right, thanks so much, Zoe. And if you have any thoughts or know of anyone, the number for suicide prevention is on your screen right now. All right, still to come on tonight's 10 o'clock news, two of the last election's most controversial initiatives failed at the polls, but what were the demographics behind that? Plus, coming up, some technology that's rare, but you can find it right here in Montana, and in turn, it can help find you. And in sports, a freak accident nearly cost Q2's Athlete of the Week her eyesight. Now she's back on the court in Joliet. Scott has her story. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.